All right, this is from 1 Kings chapter 12. If you remember, Solomon had died. Solomon's son Rehoboam is now the new king. It begins in chapter 12. Now Rehoboam went to Shechem, for all Israel had gone to Shechem to make, it, make him king. So it was when Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, heard it, he was still in Egypt. So he was like uh, exiled. Jeroboam was exiled to Egypt. All right, Rehoboam is the king still over the united country of Israel. And they sent and they called him. Then Jeroboam came and the whole congregation of Israel came and spoke to Rehoboam. Your father made our yoke heavy. Now therefore lighten the burdensome service of your father and his heavy yoke which he put upon us and we will serve you. And so he said to them, Depart for three days and come back to me. And then the people departed. And King Rehoboam consulted the elders who stood before his father Solomon while he still lived. And he said, How do you advise me to answer these people? And they spoke to him, saying, If you will be a servant to these people today and serve them and answer them and speak good words to them, then they'll be your servants forever. But he rejected the counsel with the elders gave him and consulted the younger men who had grown up with him, who had stood up before him. And he said to them, What counsel do you give? How should we answer this people who have spoken to me, saying, Lighten the yoke which your father put upon us? Then the young men who had grown up with him spoke to him, saying, You should speak thus to the people. You have spoken, saying, Your father made our yoke heavy and make it lighter on us. Thus you shall say to them, My little finger shall be thicker than my father's waist. And now, whereas my father laid a heavy yoke on you, I will add to your yoke, and my father will chasten you with whips, but I will chastise you with scourges. So Jeroboam and all the people came to Rehoboam on the third day as the king had directed. Come back to me on the third day. Then the king answered the people roughly and rejected the counsel with the elders had given to him. And he spoke to them according to the counsel of the young men, saying, My father made your yoke heaven. He goes on. So here was the situation. Under the days of King Solomon, there were heavy taxes. Well, all kinds of buildings that were going, building that was on public works. And so the people wanted tax relief. And they came to him. Rehoboam rejected the advice of the elders. You know, we talk a lot in, in the church about raising up the next generation. And it's very, very important about raising up the next generation. But the mistake that the next generation can make is not listening to the wisdom of the generation that went before them. And so that's exactly what ended up happening here. They rejected that good advice. So what we're going to see from this day forward is a civil war. So Jeroboam, there are 12 tribes in Israel. Jeroboam is going to cause a civil war. All of the 10 northern tribes are going to end up going with him. Now he's very concerned because what happens once a year in Jerusalem? The Passover. And everyone has to travel to Jerusalem. So he's got to invent his own religion, which he takes from historical uh, bad religions, and he makes two golden calves. Have you heard the story? All right. So he sets one golden calf right here. The altar, see where the people are sitting there? On the top of that, that golden calf. He made right here a great altar. See the, the metal framework there? He did one here. He did the other one down at Bethel. Okay, at the other end on the, uh, where it was. And so it says in verse 26, And Jeroboam said in his heart, Now the kingdom may return to the house of David. If these people go up to offer sacrifices in the house of the Lord at Jerusalem, then the heart of the people will turn back to their Lord, Rehoboam, king of Judah, and they will kill me and go back to Rehoboam, king of Judah. Therefore the king took counsel, made two calves of gold, and said to the people, It is too much for you to go up Jerusalem. Here are your gods, O Israel, which brought you up from the land of Egypt. And he said, One in Bethel, and the other he put in Dan. Now this thing became a sin, for the people went to worship before the one as far as Dan 
He made shrines on the high places and made priests from every class of people who were not of the sons of Levi. And Jeroboam ordained a feast on the 15th day of the eighth month, like the feast that was in Judah, and offered sacrifices on the altar. So he did at Bethel, sacrificing calves that he had, uh, sacrificing to the calves that he had made. And at Bethel he installed priests of the high places which he had made. And so he made offerings on the altar which he had made at Bethel on the 15th day of the eighth month, in the month in which he had devised in his own heart. He ordained a feast for the children of Israel and offered sacrifices to the altar of incense. Our Lord has given us a warning. When he wrote in the book of Revelation, he wrote seven letters to seven churches with messages for all people at all time. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. It's always by nature of man to go off into liberalism, to turn away from the truth of what God's Word was. In Deuteronomy chapter 28, it lays out as a nation of Israel how they're going to be blessed and how they're going to be cursed. And if they listen to the Lord and follow the Lord, they're going to be blessed. They're going to be the head and not the tail. They're going to be a lender to the nations and not a borrower of the nations. I thought we were going to part the Red Sea for a minute. but And, huh? and so what ended up happening to the nation of Israel? The Lord had told them far in advance, you turn your heart away from me you're going to be judged. And the northern tribes never had a good king. Southern tribes had some good kings, some bad kings, some good kings, some bad kings, and it would sweep back and forth. And when we're in Jerusalem, we're going to see Hezekiah, and we're going to see he was a great king, and as he was a great king, he, we're still going to see some of the things that he did there. But then he'd be followed by a bad king. And eventually, the nation was destroyed. Now, the ten northern tribes, they were the first to fall into apostasy. And they're, in the Bible, it talks about the older sister and the younger sister. And Jerusalem, Judah, did not learn from her sister because she went into captivity. This area was taken over by the Assyrians first. But they still did not repent. It was during the days of Hezekiah when the Assyrians came down that for those that want to, we're going to walk through the water source that he made, which is five football fields long, winding back and forth. It doesn't go in a straight line. It's through solid rock going through, in which, as Herzl has told us many times, to bring the water source into the city because up to that time, the Assyrians had never lost. They were brutal people. In fact, sometimes when they surround a city, everyone would commit suicide rather than to fall into the hands of the Assyrians of what they had done. So this whole area here, all the way down almost to Jerusalem, had already fallen to the Assyrians. When Hezekiah, he builds the water source, God gives him a miraculous deliverance. Remember, 185,000 Assyrians died in one night. And the king of Assyria, uh, Sennacherib, goes back and his own sons kill him. But they still did not learn. They became arrogant, just like Rehoboam had become arrogant to start the civil war with Jeroboam. And as they became arrogant then, when the Babylonians came, they didn't listen to the prophet Isaiah who warns them over and over and over again. One of the things that I've, as I've lived my life through the Bible, I've realized something. If the Lord gives a warning, I need to heed that warning. And the warning that he gives to us in these days is this. There's going to be a church that's going to be lukewarm. It's going to be a rich church, and that church is going to be young and arrogant, and they're going to say, we have need of nothing. And the Lord says of that church, I'm going to vomit you. That's pretty violent. Vomit is violent. 
I'm going to spew you out of my mouth. The Bible warns us in 2 Thessalonians of a falling away that's going to take place. And that's where, for us as, as Calvary, one of the things we adhere to is the Word of God. And regardless of the political climate that happens, and I want to tell you, the pressures of politics are huge. It's exactly what happened here. The pressures of politics for, to force people to turn their hearts away from the Lord was done in this place, and we're still seeing it here today.